Testing, testing, testing. And then let's see. Oh, maybe I scoot it over a little bit this way. Hey girl, what's going on? If What if this was at the beginning of like a TV show for me? What would my quote be? What would be like my thing, my reality TV show quote? It would be, you don't know how high I can fly. <laughs> I'm gonna shut up now. Hey, what's up, hello? It's Katie Colson here. Welcome to, or welcome back to my channel. And today we're doing another weekly-ish reading vlog, which is the only kind I do. Now, if you somehow have never been here, what do I mean by a weekly-ish reading vlog? What I mean by that is that, is this gonna contain seven days? No, 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 absolutely not. Is this gonna be a consecutive days? No. Is this gonna be like Monday to Thursday? No. Um, it's a smattering of days. Basically what I do is I just take my days off and I film on my days off. And then when there's enough combined where I finish enough books, then I'll make it into a video. And when I tell you that this was only four days and the video is somehow still an hour long, then you'll somehow begin to understand why I can't make seven day long videos because they'd be like a Quentin Tarantino feature length film. This would be like Avatar 2, like the pre-release. That's what video you'd be watching, okay? And while I know that you're all super supportive and here to see it, I don't know if I can handle like every week editing like a three hour long video. I don't know. But anyway, we're gonna be doing a video. Let me give you a little sneak peek, just a little dash of some of the books that you're gonna be seeing me talk about in this video, okay? We're definitely still living in our manga era. We're living, laughing, <laughs> and surely loving. And I can't stop saying that because of Olivia. Like she, she has ingrained that quote into me. But all of that being said, I also am reading some physical books. Like, who am I? Uh, I don't recognize them myself. But before we get into the video, I do need to take a special moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, which is GlassesUSA.com. Hey, hold up a second. We need to pop in to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is GlassesUSA.com. Now I've been shopping from them for a very long time. I have been wearing glasses since I was in fifth grade. So I am well aware how expensive they are to buy glasses at a retail store. Like it's insane. But GlassesUSA.com, what they do is they cut out the middleman so that they can offer over 9,000 frames at up to 70% off of the retail value. And that's including designer brands like Gucci and Ray-Ban and Oakley and so many more at such a reduced price. But not only than that, they also offer prescription sunglasses, they offer blue light blocking glasses, and they offer contact lenses. What? And it's 25% off of retail value for like top brands for contact lenses. You can get every single thing you could possibly need for your eyes from the comfort of your own home at glassesusa.com. And they also offer risk-free money back guarantee. What? Say it again for the people in the back. I love to see it, love to hear it, love that it exists. Another amazing thing is that because you're buying glasses online and you can't physically hold them in your hands, they do a virtual try on where you take a picture of your profile, upload it, and then it forms the glasses like to the parameters of your face. So you know what they're going to look like in real life. What? Like, that's amazing. So I have these ones here that I have. Um, no, I've had these ones for a long time. I just haven't been wearing them recently. You probably would have seen them like a year ago in those videos, but I also want to show you what the name is, just in case you want to buy them because they're super cute. And then once again, I'm going to show you my classic pair so that I can put the name of it up here because I'm sure a lot of you are going to want these. They're classic. They're kind of like my iconic look. They're simple. They're just lightweight. You don't even feel them on your face. They're amazing. So I do want to say so, so, so thank you to GlassesUSA.com for continuing to support me and the booktube community in general. If you want to check out any of these lenses, get your own. If you want to get your own contact lenses, then I will have a link down below in the description. I highly suggest this company. Thank you so much. And let's get right into the video.
hi, hello. Um, I am very randomly deciding to start a video at midnight on uh, Monday, but um, I just finished this book. I don't, okay, listen, I don't know what to say. The cover, stunning. The narrator's voice, mmm, mmm, sexual, so good. This should have been perfect. This video is not about this, but it's how we got to be making this video, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, this is Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro, and there were things about this book that were stunning. But holy shit, when I tell you, I could not understand how the book never ended. Like, it was ne I was just reading it and reading it and reading it and reading it, and I was like, why is this taking me a week to finish this book? And I was listening to it, like, pretty fast, I feel like. But oh my god, the audiobook is 25 hours long. What? What? And the epilogue isn't in the audiobook, for starters. I was following along with the book. The epilogue isn't in it. Did I read the epilogue? Surely not. Surely not. Why is there an epilogue when this is a trilogy? How are you going to have an epilogue when there's a second book? Make it make sense. It doesn't make sense. But anyway, there are things about this book that are really good. But then it was just, it was too damn long. It was too damn long. And there were things that happened in this book where I was like, okay, wait, how are we going to have a second book then? Anyway, do not feel like continuing things about this that were stunning, but it's a three star. Unfortunately, it was fine, but oh my God, did I want it to be over. So when I thought about that, I had just received this book in the mail. Oh my God, I'm so fucking excited. And unfortunately, this is so embarrassing. So I had a note in it from the person who sent it to me and now I can't find it. Hopefully I'm like, either gonna put the name over on the screen, like if I get my shit together. I know it's somewhere around here. Real quick, I found the note. Liana, one, that name is absolutely stunning, but thank you so much for sending me Sword Heart because I am so freaking pumped to read it. But I just got this in the mail and I'm so fucking excited because Riley Marie said that this was like her top romance of the year and this is by T. King Fisher and I fucking love T. King Fisher, love T. King Fisher. So I'm so excited. Like one, does this not look like the most like indie published thing you've ever seen? Like in what world? It, Hugo award winning author T. King Fisher and this is the cover she gets? I don't know, but it feels really good. And apparently it's a romance fantasy. It says return to the world of clockwork boys. Please tell me this is not a part of a sequel, like a series or something, and I'm not going to know any of the characters. I don't care. Do want to read this so bad. So I'm hoping that this is going to, like, pull me out of whatever the fuck was going on in here. So very excited to read Sword Heart, but then I'm also very excited to read Death Note Volume 1. This is the Black Edition. It's fucking stunning. The oh, my God. It's, like, like a freaking, like, dust. Not dust, but, like, ink or something like came off of it when I did that. That was so weird. Anyway, um, I'm sure that you already know what this is about. Oh, well, actually, maybe a lot of my audience probably doesn't know what this is about. Anyway, it's a manga and I read like the first three single volumes whenever I was in high school and I watched the anime. I watched the, um, the adaptation, like the, um, human adaptation, what I'm talking about, real people adaptation. And then I watched, um, a couple of the episodes during COVID and I am so excited to get back into this. I keep telling myself because I only have the first three black editions and the next three are not going to get here until Sunday and today's Monday that I was like, don't start it yet, but I can't pick anything else up. I want to read this so bad. So like, these are my two, like, oh my God, I can't wait to get my hands on these. So I just got the audiobook for this and I am going to start listening to this right now at 1230 at night on Monday slash technically Tuesday morning. Hello. But hopefully we can get some five stars out of these. We're hoping and praying. And I'm going to start listening to this. And before I go to sleep, I'm going to hit you back up, hopefully with what this book is about. Hello. It is 2 a.m. Same day slash morning slash whatever. I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Like I've already tabbed. I have tabbed. Does this tabbing system, is it cute? No, it's a whole Mardi Gras theme, honestly. But we were just, I just literally had some tabs in front of me and I was like, this one, this one, this one. Okay, 
I am on page 84. I am loving it. I just, I love it. I love the characters. I think that T. King Fisher just has such an amazing way of writing like comedic, heart-filled characters who try their fucking best and like they are communicative and there's not like really like miscommunication tropes. It's just characters who are doing their best with the information that they have and are so like they just have such big hearts but such little information to what's going on and I love it. So basically, okay, so this is about this girl. Her name's Hala and she is the housekeeper of her great uncle's estate because her husband has died. So her husband died and she's taking care of her great uncle's estate because she doesn't have anywhere else to go. But then her great uncle dies and leaves her everything, like leaves her like the entire will. But of course her greedy ass family is like, what? And she is like the main target of this family. And they basically like keep her hostage in a room, like lock her up in a room and are like, um, we're going to keep you here until you agree to marry your cousin because the mom of the cousin is like, I want that money. I want this house. You know, you're going to marry him. And she's like, um, no, disgusting. So basically this is so funny. It's sad, but it's so funny. She decides that a better way to live than to be this like older woman slave, you know, to her gross ass son. She's like, I don't want to do that. So I have to kill myself because I would rather kill myself than get married and be bred by this gross ass man and his disgusting mom. So she, there's a sword in the room that she's being kept in, this giant sword. And she's trying to figure out how to kill herself with a sword. <laughs> and she's like, okay, maybe I can like, like put it through my heart, like I don't know. And when she unsheets it, <laughs> this guy named Sarkis comes out because he's like attached to the sword. Like magically, he's attached to the sword. So anybody that uses the sword or is bequeathed in her in her sense is bequeathed the sword. She has like dominion over him. Like he has to protect her because she owns the sword and he's connected to the sword. So when she tries to kill herself, this dude pops up and is like, sis, what are you doing? Like, what is all this about? No, no, honey, honey, I can save you. Don't worry about it. I can help you, girl. And then it's like him, this like ancient warrior from a different world is like, you have to get married to who? Him, the man with the clammy hands? Ew, no. Hella, sit down. I've got this. And it is so... It's so good. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's just, it's sweet. Let me see. What did I put a tab on? Let's see. What did I put a tab on? Um, okay. Well, that's a sweet moment. I'm not going to say that just in case it's a spoiler. It was a funny moment. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, when she meet, whatever Sarkis meets the guy, like the cousin that she's supposed to get married to, he says, um, I shall not be wielded by a man with clammy hands. <laughs> What the fuck? I don't even understand. I don't understand, but I'm loving it. But it is 2 a.m. or even past that, to be honest. So I am going to bid you adieu. And I will, well, honest, I'm going to keep reading, honestly. But I'm going to bid the camera adieu. And I will see you tomorrow. Hello again. It is Tuesday, but if it's like 3.30 p.m. Because I have a good reason. Okay. It's because Olivia and I were doing our House of Leaves 
uh, live show for our Patreons. And whew, that's a lengthy, lengthy book and it's a lengthy discussion, okay? We could have gone on for a million years. We talked about it for like an hour and a half, but then after the live show was over, Olivia and I just like stayed on StreamYard for like an hour and a half after that, or maybe even two hours, I don't know. But talk, 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 talking, okay? And uh, so obviously I, my book is dirty. I haven't read any more of this. I'm still on page 84, but I did pick up Death Note last night and I got to page 108. So that is chapter four is what I would be on now. And I put some tabs in it. Okay. And let me tell you, I had to look up when this book came out. Oh my God, no, I put my books in water. We're going to hope it's water. That's what I'm going to say. We're just going to pray. Wow, Katie, don't do that. Ugh. Okay, um, I had to look up when this came out, and I think it said 2003? 2003, because <coughs> this is so... There's really not a better word than emo. <laughs> this is so hot topic grunge, y'all. Oh, my God. But something that I'm loving about this is that, okay... I'm this far in, all right? Um, there's only like five pages of exposition. This is not, it ain't deep like that. It ain't deep like that, okay? Like literally, it just, I don't know if I told you what this is about. Let me tell you real quick. Okay, if you don't already know, this is about this boy right here, Light Yagami, and he is super smart, super intelligent. He's like top of his class, but he's bored. He's bored. His dad works at the police department and as like a head detective or whatever. And this death god, a Shinigami, Ryuk, is super bored in his death realm. He's super bored. And he has a thing called a death note, okay? So he drops it into the human world because he's bored and he just wants to see what's going to happen. And Light finds it. And in the death note, there's rules. And the rules are that you can write somebody's name. And if you don't write how they die or when they die, then they'll die of a heart attack. Like within an hour, or within like, I don't remember how much time. And if you do write how they'll die, then they'll die in that way. And you have to picture who it is so that you don't accidentally kill somebody with the same name. Okay. Light finds this and is like, really? Hmm. And he kills like a criminal. And then it's like, oh shit, this works? Oh my god, I'm gonna be a god. He's literally like, I'm gonna be a god. I'm gonna decide who deserves to be on this earth and who doesn't. So it is very much like how Monster, the manga that I just finished and absolutely fucking loved, is like, there's a whole tone of that, of like who deserves to live and who deserves to die. And Light is taking it upon his teenage ass self to make those decisions. And Ryuk, the death god, is like, you're crazy, girl. You're crazy. And it's like totally down. Totally down to ride. He's like this giant monster, but like only light can see him because anybody that touches the Death Note can see him. And then we also have this boy, L, who is this secret like operative that's working with like the Japanese police force um, who nobody knows what he looks like. And he is tasked to find light not knowing that Light's his name. Basically, the media is calling him Kira. And Kira is like, Kira, what does it stand for in Japanese? It stands for like, bright? Oh, it stands for shiny. Whatever that means. Anyway, um, I'm this far in, and I am gonna go to Starbucks because Olivia was drinking a venti Starbucks the entire time I was talking to her, and the jealousy that I felt was unfucking real it was unreal and she literally told me she was like this is your coffee order because you're going to send you're going to make a video of you trying it because you're going to film a weekly reading vlog and i was like oh my god girl how did you know that i literally started a vlog last night how did you know so she told me to get i hate giving complicated orders because it makes me like feel anxious because i'm like oh my god they're gonna think i'm an asshole um so she told me to get a venti iced latte with five pumps of toffee nut and two pumps of white mocha, no classic sugar. I better be right. If I fuck this up, Olivia, I'm going to make you proud. I promise. Okay. My blood sugar is low. Um, so I'm going to do that and I'm going to go to the grocery store, but on the way I'm going to listen to Swordheart. Olivia does it. Olivia reads a latte. Yeah. 
Listen to her, my friends. This shit slaps. This shit slaps. So it is a venti ice latte, five pumps toffee nut syrup, two pumps white mocha. No classic sugar. It's a fucking delight. It's a delight. It's so good. It's so good. And I got a ham and cheese croissant. I've never had one from there and it didn't say it. I don't feel like on the menu, but what I tried to order, they didn't have. So I got that instead. And I've been sitting in my car reading this because I wanted to read it while I was driving and I want to read it while I'm walking around the grocery store, but I can't because I need to tab. I need to tab. I fucking love this. I love it. Like, look at these tabs. This color scheme is so hideous. Like, I feel like I'm going to just tab the shit out of this and then go back and redo my tabs because these are so ugly. Like, I'm using purple, green, and yellow. I'm revolting myself, but it's so funny. This book is so funny and it's so cute. It's so cute. T.K. Fisher just has this amazing way of writing like 30-year-old relationships that are somehow still innocently like naive and adorable. And I'm just obsessed. I'm obsessed. Okay. So I'm absolutely loving it. I think I'm... Mm, okay. I'm not going to listen to it while I walk around the grocery store. I thought about taking this and the tabs in with me and like tabbing it in the grocery store. But I'm, I'm not going to be that girl. I'm not going to be that girl. So I'm going to grocery shop and then get right back to my book. There is only one of you, only one of me There's a million of those who won't let us be But they're not gonna, not gonna see me bleed Cause baby, I got you, 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 you I've been beaten to the ground, dragged across the dirt I've been scared to live cause some people never learn But they're not gonna, not gonna watch me burn Cause baby, I got you, you, you I am about to go watch Erin's sprints. She's so good about sprinting. Like, I love her aesthetic, the way she sprints on her Patreon. It's just amazing. So, I am going to go and watch that. And I am going to continue with Death Note. And if I'm doing something, I'll listen to... Um, I'm just so obsessed. I really am obsessed with what I'm reading right now. Like, this is a good day. This is a good day. Okay. But I also wanted to tell you that let me shift my shit around real quick that i got something in the mail um i got two things in the mail this one's so tiny look at these little babies um this is from courtney layman oh my god it's smudged so it looks like it says um court meg because <laughs> i can't show it to you it's really funny i can't show you because i don't want to expose her address but oh okay this is gonna be a very satisfying reveal look at this hulk out she's Oh, 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 is this, is this about diabetes? Is this about diabetes? Is this about diabetes? Hold on. Sweet Blood by Pete Hotman. 16-year-old Lucy is undead, at least according to her own theories about vampirism. Lucy believes that the first vampires with their pale skin, long teeth, and uncontrollable thirst were dying diabetics. And she should know she's a diabetic herself. She's a diabetic and a vampire. Courtney, Courtney. Oh my God. Okay, Courtney, how do I not know this book existed? Okay. When Lucy becomes involved with... I have goosebumps. With Draco. This has got to be a Harry Potter fan fiction, like a like an uh, original character in Draco. It says involved in Draco, a self-proclaimed real vampire. She meets in the Transylvania chat room. I'm fucking crying. I'm cr I want to read this right now. Like what the fuck, bro? Okay, bro, 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 bro. I'm freaking out. Okay, 
<clears throat> her world begins crashing down around her, caught up in the late night parties and goth culture. Bitch, this is all of my buzzwords. This is all of my buzzwords. She begins to lose control of her grave relationships and health. Lucy realizes she needs to make some important choices and fast, but it may already be too late. Courtney, this is like, how did I not know this existed? This better be good. It's probably gonna be terrible, but I'm, I want it to be good. I am freaking out. Like now I feel bad because I'm like, literally how is anything gonna stand up to that? That is the greatest unboxing in the history of the universe. But this is a super tiny, cute little box. It could be something precious. Did I buy? This is a death note because I bought myself death note. It wouldn't get here that fast, right? Let's, no, it's not, okay. Just a weird little collections of stories I hope you'll enjoy. Cassie, okay, Cassie ate. Cassie was, oh, fuck. Wait, is this the one that, Out There by Kate Falk. Is this the one that Kayla loved? I love the way this feels. This is nice. A thrilling new voice in fiction injects the absurd into the everyday in a style so sharp and genius you may cut yourself while reading. What? I loved it. But I'm excited. I've heard people talk about this and it looks good and it's super short. We fucking love to see it. But um, yeah, goddamn. Cassie, thank you so much. Like, I love that you thought about me when you saw this. You were like, look at this little weirdo. Also, this looks like a bisexual flag. It does. Anyway, thank you. I truly, truly fucking appreciate this so much. Okay, let's get back to reading. It's Wednesday and it is like 2.50 and I have to be at work at three. I was supposed to be at work at four, but then I got a text that was like, oh, we like messed up and the party actually starts at 4.30. So you need to get, can you get here at three? And I was like, sure. And then we got a text because there's supposed to be four of us that are working and got a text that said like, oh, we only need three of you. Does anybody want the night off? And then the girl that's in the car next to the car next to me who she's cool so hopefully she's not weirded out that I'm sitting here filming myself she was like yeah sure I'll take the night off and she never gets the night off because she's like the main party girl so they're like cool you can have the night off and then she texts me she texts me like 10 minutes later and is like oh actually like I'm working tonight because the Pisces man messaged the managers and said that he's not feeling well so he got the night off instead. I was like, I don't fucking believe you. I don't believe your eyes. You're gonna t you're gonna message at like 2 p.m. when you would have had to have left in an hour to get there because you're gonna leave at 3 p.m. to get to work. You text at 2 p.m. and say that you're sick. You had a lot of daylight hours before that to say that. So I think you're a liar. But anyway, whatever. LOL. Um, let's see what I did. So last night. I changed my tabbing system for Sword Heart to blues, and then I only had three blues. So we've got a teal, a light blue, a dark blue, and a purple. And right now, um, purple is like other, and then light blue is romantic. So cute. And then um, dark blue is feminist, because T. King Fisher just has a freaking way. She just has a way. And then uh, teal is funny. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I was like, I literally have to stop myself from reading it because I don't want it to be over and I want it to take as long as possible. So I'm on page 212, which is chapter 27. Living, laughing, 
loving. Now, okay, we have we have a good and bad. So I finished Death Note Volume 1 and 2, or the Black Edition Volume 1. And okay, so I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how I was going to tab it. And now Aaron was like, why would you tab these beautiful black sprayed edges? And I was like, yeah, damn, you're right. So I'm thinking about not tabbing this one and seeing if like, if I get farther through it, if I feel like I really need to tab, then I will. But if I don't, I'll take the tabs out of the, excuse me, out of the first one. But um, okay, so in the first black edition, so volume one and two, uh, okay, I love it. I love it. I fucking love it. I'm living the nostalgia. Oh my God. It's literally like the most hot topic feelings. Like it's so emo. I can't handle it. Um, this is like Black Parade on full blast. But there's one thing about these books. There's one thing. And it's how misogynistic it is. It is so like, okay, the guy that writes this, the way he treats female characters abysmal abysmal literally like the way naomi in the first book the way that um ray her fiance treats naomi who i fucking love naomi i like i get that she's only in there for like half a second but like i love her and he literally is like she used to be an fbi agent and she was a big deal and he's like oh well um you can't be an fbi agent anymore because you're my fiance and once you have babies then like you'll you won't even have time to think about like your job or like how much you miss it anymore No. And then there's like, um, literally light will be like, well, it's a woman. Like, how was she going to do anything? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't like that. So I think I might give it four stars instead of five stars. Like the first one. I don't know. It's like, ugh, I'm struggling because light and L are actually like fucking geniuses. Like light is so smart. It's like honestly fucking terrifying. And then L is like Sherlock Holmes. He is so, they're so smart. And literally the shit that Light does in these books. Amazing, amazing, stunning. So good. Like literally if you've read um, the second volume of the single editions, whenever he does the whole, like he has a piece of paper inside a manila envelope and the cutouts, like the cutouts that he has so that the guy will like fill the names in. Okay, if you know, you know. Fucking brilliant. Brilliant! Oh my God. I was like, he's a genius. He's a genius. And then like cutting parts of the, the Death Note out and um, having other people pick it up so that they'll see Ryuk because if somebody touches the Death Note, then they can see Ryuk. And doing that to like scare the shit out of them so that like he can escape or he can do something. Brilliant. Brilliant. I can't. Okay. So anyway, now we've finally gotten, not finally, shit happens so fast, but I've gotten to the part where um, L and Light have met each other, but neither of them, like, it's like they're both trying to figure out who each other is, and it's like Light is trying to figure out what L's name is, like what his real name is, and L's like, hmm, you're never gonna find out. Nice. Try! But anyway, yes, loving it. I do have to work a really in-depth, like, whiskey tasting party tonight, so... I don't know if I'll be able to read anything, but I'm going to take Death Note in with me and we'll see. I don't know if I'll be able to film anything. I don't know. We'll find out. There is only one of you, only one of me. There's a million of those who won't let it be. But then I'm not gonna, not gonna see me please. Cause baby, I got you, 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 you. I've been beaten to the ground, dragged across the dirt. I've been scared to live cause some people never learn But they're not gonna, not gonna watch me burn Cause baby I got you, 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 you Hey, it is um, Thursday. All right, that party, um, I didn't end up filming anything 
last night, like talking about what I was reading, even though I did read some. I read a little of Sword Heart last night, but then today I ended up, I went to sleep at 3 a.m. and woke up at 7 a.m. Make it make sense. Anyway, it's noon now. And I was reading for a couple hours and I got to page 334 of Sword Heart. And I will say that it's like moving a little bit, not moving slower, but like there's not as many tabs at this part, but I love it. I love it. Riley from Riley Marie. She's right. She's right. She did me right. She did me right. I am upset. I love it. I think it is so fucking cute. It's so cute. It's so romantic and so funny. And then I just realized that there's a trans character in this. And I don't know how I did not notice. And it's like the priest, they, it's called, they're always called they, them. But I don't know why I did not catch on. I was just like, yeah, okay. But the representation is fantastic. And it was so well done that I didn't even like notice that it was happening. I was just like, oh yeah, that's a character. And then I was like, oh wait, no, that's amazing representation. Love to see it. Anyway, yes, loving this. And then I was also reading some more of Death Note. So as of now, I believe, so I'd be done with volume three. So now I'm on to volume four and I am shook because, <laughs> okay, I've seen anime, okay? I've seen anime. I know Misa Misa, okay? And like now, even though I thought that I'd only read like three of the single volumes, I must have read more than that because there's artwork of Misa that I recognize and remember. And I did not remember that. I thought that when Misa came into the storyline, I thought that she came in and like kind of was like obsessively kind of like falling in love with Light. And then maybe like she discovered that he was Kira and then she got embroiled in it and like, then got into the thick of it? No. She comes into the plot already in the thick of the plot. She's already in the thick of the plot. Like, this bitch has been scheming. She's been doing shit in the sidelines. And then all of a sudden, she's like, nudes broadcast. Like, I love you. I'm like, oh my god. What the fuck? It's exciting, though. And we also, oh my god, I, we, I don't remember her name. But the girl Shinigami... I don't, I don't remember her name, but she was a very fascinating character and very excited to see that. Now, I will say, let me show you some artwork of Misa Misa because this is what I mean by why do they have to be so misogynistic? Like, I just don't understand. Right? This, this here. Why is it? Oh, she's reaching over to grab something and it's like, let's just show her ass cheeks. Why? Like, and her sitting on the bed like that, you're never gonna see any of the men in here doing that shit. I'm gonna tell you that right now. And also, uh, this is the thing that made me remember this being misogynistic is I remember that Misa, the way she acts, I just remember it being like, obviously like high school girls, we all loved Misa Misa, but then I feel like as an adult, I'm gonna look back and be like, this is not cool. Anyway, the way she's portrayed is just uh, like she's like the crazy girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, I am going to go to my P.O. box because I had ordered the next three and two of them are at my P.O. box right now. So I'm going to go and pick that up. And then I'd also picked up another one of those like fitness sets in black. And we're going to like have a whole matching moment. So let's go do that. Okay, the box is secured, but it is incredibly light for two deluxe editions of a manga and a set of clothes. I mean, it could be, you know, it could be accurate. I'm having my doubts though. Okay, shit, no, it was right, it was right. Okay, this is, um, do I know Roman numerals? I have them tattooed on me, but do I know them? No. Um, I'm gonna assume this is definitely five, for sure. And then this is six. This is embarrassing. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is six. God, I'm a freaking idiot. Okay, um, hi, I got these two volumes, but I don't have four, so I'm missing like the middle volume. But that should be coming in in a couple days. And then we have the set. 
You've already, you've seen this so many times, but I'm going to go put this on. I'm excited. Look at this. It's so cute. I'm obsessed. Okay. Look at this little black on black on black hole. Okay. We love it. Living our goth spice era. God. Okay, for starters, before we get in, let's check out the fit. <laughs> we love it. But this, okay, this Shinigami Ryuk, he is the hidden gem. Like, I, he, he doesn't really do much. He literally just floats around behind light and is sassy. He's just snarky and he's eating apples, floating around, not helping one bit. He helps nothing. He literally, he knows a lot and is just sitting there like, hmm, what are you going to do? just watching like he's the audience it's hilarious but he is so fucking funny like okay so lights asking him if someone else has a shinigami if they can see each other and he's like yeah we can see each other and he's like what will you talk to each other and he's like i don't know i guess it depends on the other shinigami like if they want to talk to me or not and he says so if the other shinigami sees you he might reveal that i'm kira he shouldn't normally, but it's all up to the Shinigami's personality. And Light's like, I can assume I have your personality down correctly. Ryuk, deadpans. Yeah, even if I see a human with a Shinigami, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> He's just like, no. <laughs> He's like, I could have seen a million Shinigamis by now. You don't know. I'm like, oh my god, Ryuk is fucking hilarious. He is so funny. I love it. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, okay, we're farther in. I can't with this bitch. I can't. Misa is crazy. <laughs> She's crazy. Okay, listen. There are so many different kinds of, you know, mental things happening. Like, all the characters have so many different neuroses and disorders. And there's a lot of different absolutely madness going on with a lot of these characters. But Misa is like manic crazy like she is manic as fuck and she literally just like shows up to light store and it's like i just couldn't wait any longer hi and i'm like huh? oh god and i'm looking at light like yeah i'd be fucking terrified because you can't you can't trust her i mean she might she i'm sure she's gonna be loyal she loyal but she's like the harley quinn oh my god wait she is like the harley quinn he's like oh took me like 10 years to realize this anyway um she's batshit like <laughs> okay anyway it's just, this book is making me laugh so goddamn hard i am really enjoying it the book is like 15 and a half hours long and there's just oh, no reason Lord. for it to be that long no okay i am about to join gabby on her patreon for patrons friends i literally <laughs> I jumped on the second she went live and I was like, hey. And she was like, oh, if you're not doing anything. And I'd already typed out, I'm down. So we like, I'm ready. And also we're doing the same shit I always do. We're going back and I know I'm almost done with it, but I have to go back to the beginning because I need to tab it. And now I'm rethinking all of my tabs. I have to, I have to tab it. I like, I, I have to. Like, do I think that this looks better than this? Of course I do. But I need there to be tabs. I need there to be tabs. Especially for the funny moments. I need to be able to look back on this shit. Anyway, um, I'm going to hop on these sprints and finish this volume. Okay, you can do a black layout on Palma Focus. Let me just change my entire StreamYard aesthetic, okay? Um, also because of, well, I'm not, huh, you can't tell, but I'm wearing all black. You already knew that. All black. Okay, so I finished volume two or the black edition volume two. I'm getting sick of saying stuff like that. Anyway, um, we are tabbing, bitch. I went back to the beginning and I didn't reread it, but I went back to the beginning of thing, like flipping through and tabbing things that I knew I wanted to tab. And then I re-tabbed the first one because <laughs> we just always do that. So I'll show you. Um, I re-tabbed, I kept, um, or I changed the red to be light and then the blue for L because in the show, like, that's how they're depicted is, like, his eyes will be, like, red, and then, like, he'll have, like, a blue light around him, and then we have green for funny, yellow for Misa, because she has blonde hair, and then this is just, like, oh, damn, that's cute, so 
We've got some tabbies on this one, but we definitely have some tabbies on this one. We have so many yellows because Misa's fucking crazy, y'all. Misa's fucking crazy. <laughs> She's crazy. And I'm like, okay, it's literally, this book is literally like, if you took Batman and the Joker, but they were Moriarty and Sherlock Holmes, but then like Sherlock or Moriarty had a Harley Quinn. That's what it's like. That's what it's like. I really enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed this. I like this a lot more than the first one because while Misa is not, Misa is not a good depiction of women. She's not, but she is a very fascinating character. She's very fascinating. She's obsessively like in love with this Kira character and is willing to do anything. And that's very inter interesting. I really enjoy that. Um, so in that regard, it, it doesn't feel as, it's not as openly sexist as this one is because this one's just talking about women in general. And this one is like, Mies is crazy, but I'm like, yeah, Mies is crazy. So I don't have a problem with that. Anyway, whatever. So finish that. And then what I think I'm going to do instead of picking up the third one right now, I think I'm actually going to pick up the Promise Neverland volume one because Olivia said this was like, I think she said this was her favorite manga that she'd ever read. And then Steph said that she really loved it. And then I'm also on page 414 of Sword Heart. And I love it. I just love it. It's so cute. I'm digging it. And also, actually, I made one of these little things too. So I only have four colors. So um, obviously I already told you about that, but I'm already, I already wrote four and a half strings. Okay. Because I can already tell you, I'm going to love it. I don't give a fuck what happens in the last 50 pages. Four and a half stars. Bro. Bro. My good lad. What the fuck? Oh my God. Oh my God. I have goosebumps on my whole fucking body right now. What the fuck? I don't understand how somebody could pick this up and read this simplistic, very simple misleading summary on the back and then get hit. with what's actually going on. What the fuck? This is like, if like, it literally looks like Kingdom of Hearts. Like that's, it's very like, it's this orphanage and there's all these young children and they're all so happy. Um, I only read the first chapter and when I tell you my mind is fucked up. What the fuck? I'm like genuinely scared of this book and I've only read one chapter. So, uh, pray for me. <gasps> what? What? When I tell you, I'm, like, genuinely freaked out by this book. Like, I genuinely... This scared the shit out of me. This is scary. This little book with these cute little children. Scary. Fucking scary. And let me tell you, the scariest thing... I need to show you the picture of her face. This girl? I'm scared. I can't. Okay. No, no. Her face fucking terrifies me. What? But also, like, five stars? But, like, also, like, five stars. Like, so scary. Like, genuinely, I'm fucking freaked out. Like, I don't understand. I'm like, I'm like I don't, I can't even go to the second book. Like, I need to, I need to read something else. Because I'm scared. I can't. Okay. And Aaron, I'm watching Aaron and Mina on uh, their reading sprints right now. And Aaron's like, you better be vlogging because I know that you'll read a book and then like update the next day and be like, oh, did I tell you I finished that? Anyway. And I'm like, yeah, bitch, you are correct. But I am also so close to being done with Sword Heart. So close. I'm on chapter 58, so 456. So I have like less than 20 pages left. So I'm going to finish this and get back to you. And I'm like, I'm scared because I'm, like, I'm scared what's going to happen in the end. Because something big just happened. And I need her to uh, rewind. Rewind, because I don't want that to happen. So yeah, I'm going to hit you back up in like 10 minutes. You guessed it. We're back again, only a little bit later. But I actually ended up um, finishing it. But then I went back and listened to the last three chapters again. Because... I don't remember what I was doing, but I, I was not edit. I was not tabbing, and I was like, I need to go back and tab. So 
I love it. I, I love T. King Fisher. I love T. King Fisher. And honestly, part of me is like, is this five, like, is this five stars? Is it? Because I also kind of want to give the second Death Note five stars. Because it's wild. It's absolutely wild. I'm like, or is it four stars? Like, is it, I don't know. It's a promise. I'm never like five stars. Am I going to give, I think the first Death Note, Death Note volume one, four stars. Death Note volume two, five stars. The Promised Neverland, five stars. And the five stars. I'm throwing around too many five stars. I am. But it's like, it's because they're the vibe. They are the fucking vibe. They're good. They're so fucking good. Like, I feel like this, this is a hard sell. It's a hard sell. I'm not gonna, I'm not telling everybody it's gonna be, I, 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 honestly, four and a half stars? Is it four and a half stars? Maybe it's four and a half stars. But look at these tabs though. Oh, real quick, I need to pop in and apologize. Uh, Zale in this book is not trans, he's non binary. They, not he, they, they, them, non binary, not trans. My absolute bad. No, no, no. This is what I'll say. If you love Tiki Fisher, if you loved the relationship in Nettle and Bone with the main character and the person they're in a relationship with in Nettle and Bone, then you'll love this because those two relationships are for the same girly. That girly is me. That girly is me. I loved it. Um, also, Riley, if you have not read Nettle and Bone, you're going to fucking love it because it just has more plot. This is more romance than it is plot. So I probably, I, like, I love Nettle and Bone more than this, but I loved this. That's why I'm like, maybe this is four and a half stars and that one's like, five stars. honestly, literally, I don't know. We're going to have to look back later, but I fucking loved it. I just feel like I have to give everything by T. King Fisher five stars. Honestly, that's where really, really where we're at. That's really where we're at. It's just like, it deserves, she deserves that. Anyway, um, also, uh, Mina on these sprints was like, okay, when are you going to get into the Saints of Steel, I think, is the world. And apparently this is part of it. I was like, immediately, bitch, I'm checking the library immediately. We're reading everything T. King Fisher, everything. And honestly, I'm going to have to go check and see. I need to check and see how long this video is. Because if this video is too long i'm gonna end it here tonight but if it's not i'll read another book but like this might be too long and i'm like too scared to read another book because it's gonna have to be a failure after these were all such successes like the next book has to be a failure it just has to be so anyway i'm gonna end this clip i might pop back in with an outro which will be awkward but if not good night slash goodbye well hello you have made it to the end of this video i am very surprised to see it. You are truly a trooper. But let's take a freaking look at all the things that I read in this video. Now, I have ranked them from things that I liked the most, kind of ranking them down to things that I liked a little bit less. Now, this video was a huge success. A huge freaking success. But I do want to um, reevaluate the ratings that I gave in these videos because, you know, I'm, 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 I'm hyped. And then I'll give it a rating. And then I'm like, you should take a step back and really evaluate your process here. Uh, so uh, I definitely, I put volume two over volume one of The Promised Neverland only because they're both five stars, but it does get better and better and better with every volume. And I did Sword Heart. Now I had said I was going to give it four and a half stars, but really upon reflection, I'm going to give it four stars because I loved it, but it's just like a fast and fun time. I'm not really going to like really sit and like hold these characters in my heart, even though it's really good. It's really good. And then I put volume two over volume one. I'd already stated uh, volume two is better because volume one has like a blatant misogyny. Like the ugh, Naomi deserved rights. Anyway, I am going to lower my ratings for these. I had said I was going to give this one four stars and this one five stars. No, I'm going to give volume two four stars and volume three, three and a half stars because I actually went and looked and it says that eight years ago, I went on Goodreads and rated volume one four stars. And I was like, eight years ago, I would have been like in high school, like like a freshman or sophomore in high school, I think. And I was not giving out anything less than like a four star. So me giving that four stars, I was a little bit more self-aware than I had thought. And then I put Ordinary Monsters down here. I gave it three stars, but I do want to say, again, this doesn't have anything to do with the book. Like clearly I'm in my manga era. I should not be reading long fantasies like this. 
even though I am currently making a Throne of Glass reading vlog. Stay tuned for that. I shouldn't be doing it. I would highly recommend this book. I think it's fantastic. It just wasn't for me at the time. So if you have gotten this far into the video, if you want to leave, let's see, leave, oh, this is perfect. Leave a sword and a heart for Sword Heart by T. King Fisher. I am so excited to read everything the woman has literally ever written. So leave the sword in the heart if you've gotten this far. Also, I would highly recommend you checking out glassesusa.com with the links that I have down below because as you know, I wear glasses all the time and that's where all of them are from, is from Glasses USA. And I hope that they want to work with me in the future because I could always use some new pairs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, what's up? Glasses USA, you want to sponsor me again? What's up? Anyway, I hope you're having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever it is you're having in whatever part of the world that you are currently having it in. And I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye.